Good afternoon and welcome to The Balance of Life. I am Pastor Angel Ferguson and I thank you so very much for joining us today. Truly, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. It is always our honor and our pleasure to come and spend some time with you in the Word of God. So excited about what we're going to share with you on today. I want you to know first and foremost that you are in my continuous thoughts and prayers. I thank you for being a part of our ministry family here with the Balance of Lives radio broadcast. We do have some things we want to share with you uh, before we dive into our word. Uh, we're working on several things to release. Uh, we've had a very busy year from our College of Ministry and from our publishing division. Uh, last week, I believe we shared with you that we are putting together our life applications, the devotional. The price has already been set for $10. So that is going to be the sale of life applications, the devotional. We do plan on selecting a few copies to give away for free. So please stay tuned for that time in which you can receive a free copy of Life Applications, the devotional. Also, we have released from our College of Ministry, Leadership Awareness, the Pastor's Position. That particular workbook is $15 per copy. We have released, I Want to Be Free, a teaching on the Ministry of Deliverance. That is $15 as well. Now, we do offer those particular courses through the College of Ministry and mentoring programs. The cost of the book itself is $15. So you can do a individual study or if you are a uh, school, a ministry, or a Bible study group and you would like to purchase our curriculum in bulk, you can do so. Simply email us here at thebalanceoflife1 at yahoo.com and we'll take care of the rest. We do have a few other publications that we're going to release uh, besides life applications. The, the devotional, we're also going to release cycle breakers. Now, we're going to have that released uh, September, so we're looking forward to that. All right, let's dive into the Word of God because I'm so excited. I, and I'm looking at the time, uh, was awakened in the middle of the night to God be the glory uh, just praying and meditating on some things. And a few things came into my focus. Uh, and I said, you know what? We're going to talk about these things this week on the radio. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the spirit of discernment. Uh, and this came about my first thought process that I was thinking on at, let's see, I sent this email to myself at 1.38 a.m. Be careful of that spirit that will come and try to provoke you to move prematurely, which will become a premature birth. It's not time yet, and we're going to look at the example of Saul. And another thought that came to me, which we will look at tomorrow, you must have an anointing for the ministry God gave you before you can have one for someone else's ministry. We're going to look at the example of Jeremiah. Uh, also, we're going to look at the examples of where God tells us to return to our first love. And then on Thursday, we're going to look at who is this vision for? Yes, God gave you a vision, but who is supposed to receive the benefits of vision. So that is going to kind of shape us up for our time with you Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday of this week, 1230 p.m. Central Standard Time. So our first one is the spirit of discernment. And we're going to look at the definition of the spirit of discernment. We're also going to take a look at some scripture texts. We're going to look at an example of of King Saul, which resulted in a premature birth of his realm as king, the first king appointed over Israel. Now, uh, when I say premature birth, although he did sit in kingship, uh, God began to look for another vessel 
to succeed him because of his lack of obedience. Here's where the spirit of discernment must come in. Whenever we feel or hear, however we want to identify a, a, a time of moving forward, of, of progression, whether it's starting something, expanding something, oftentimes uh, it could even be to stop something. We must know where that thought comes from. We must know where it generated from. Try the spirit by the spirit. Because what I see, and it's nothing new, but it is evident today as like no other, a spirit to provoke individuals to move prematurely. Our flesh gets excited. Uh, our flesh also gets frustrated our mind gets overwhelmed and our patients run very very thin but is it God's timing and so a individual must uh, submit themselves as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto God which is our reasonable service and we must tell our flesh to wait is this God's timing Knowing your timing, knowing your season, when to move is imperative because anxiousness, uh, a spirit of being anxious could enter into our minds and cause us to move prematurely. It's not that God does not have things in store for us, is that we move ahead of his time. And therefore, when we move ahead of his time, things do not transpire they do not manifest according to God's plans and therefore we must have a spirit of discernment what is uh, the force behind my moving what is this unction all about am I moving because the Holy Spirit is drawing me to move or am I moving according to my flesh because I'm simply tired of where I am? Am I moving because people say that I should move forward because they want to see you and I in a certain place, in a certain position, but is it God's timing? So recognize where the voice is coming from, where the um, ignition to the fire. Uh, where is it coming from? Is this God drawing you? Is this God instructing you to move? Is it God saying, hey, get in a hurry, move expeditiously? Oftentimes, I've heard this while ministering. Um, move expeditiously. Move in a hurry. But the individual who is instructed to move in a hurry or to move expeditiously must know that those instructions are for them and that they are coming from God. Because, because the word was released in a room full of people, I must know if that word is meant for me. It might not be my time. So I must have the spirit of discernment. Now, when we look in our study Bible, and if you are a frequent listener of The Balance of Life, you'll know that I utilize Life in the Spirit Study Bible. It is the King James Version. It is the revised version. It's not the original one. It's the revised one, but I do have the original. And when I went to replace my Bible that had been torn and battered, uh, they had the revision available. Now, in this book, there is uh, study articles on the gifts of the Spirit for believers. And when we look at uh, what is known as, uh, it's number seven, distinguishing between gifts. This gift is a special spirit given ability to properly discern evil spirits and to distinguish whether or not 
and utterance is from the Holy Spirit. That's important. Let me read that again. Distinguishing between spirits. This gift is a special gift given ability to properly discern evil spirits and to distinguish whether or not an utterance is from the Holy Spirit. We must know if a utterance is from the Holy Spirit. In other words, what is leading and guiding you and I to do what we do? To say what we say, to go where we go. What is leading us? What is drawing us to this place? Is it the Holy Spirit? Because if we are not careful, if we do not distinguish the utterance of that spirit, it could very well result in a premature birth of whatever God wants to do through you and I. Scripture texts also, we're going to, let's look at 1 Corinthians 14, 29. And it reads as follows. How is it then, brethren, when you come together, every one of you have a psalm, have a doctrine, have a tongue, have a revelation, have an interpretation, let all things be done in decency and in order. I'm starting at 26. If any man speak in an unclean, unknown tongue, let it be by two or at the most by three, and that by course, and let one interpret. But if there be no interpreter, let him keep silence in the church and let him speak to himself and to God. Let the prophet speak two or three and let the other judge. So here, this is in judging prophecy. It's also the God-given ability of discernment. As we read in uh, the definition, being able to distinguish where an utterance came from. Now, we're going to also look at Saul, who should have followed the instructions of the prophet Samuel, who was also judge. He was instructed by God to anoint Saul as the first king of Israel, and he gave him some instructions. Now his flesh got in the way. And he moved prematurely. In the New Testament, as well as in our time now, we would look at that as a spirit that provoked him to move out of the will of God. And so even though we may have instructions, I don't care who says what. If God didn't tell you to move, don't you move. Someone could come and tell you it's your time to move, but if God had already told you to wait, you wait. You go back in prayer. God, you gave me some instructions to wait, and now I have received this word that says, move forward. What are you saying to me? Let God be true. And every man a liar. Once again, don't move and become quickened by your flesh. Don't get in a hurry for anything. Scripture tells us be anxious for nothing. Don't be so anxious. Don't be so caught up. Don't look over and see someone else that they seem to be progressing very well. That it just looks so very, very marvelous over there. That you jump and say, okay, I'm going to get busy. I'm going to start moving. Is it your time? I believe last week I gave you an example of this. Two times. I moved prematurely. And both times. It did not turn out good. The end result was not good. It was not my time. 
And I love and respect the person who gave me the word. But it was my responsibility to go back and pray and say, God, give me the time of this movement. I did not do that. So it is a lesson learned. And now I seek God. I want to move according to his will. I, I can no longer move by emotions. Whether my emotions or anybody else's. I can't do it. Because I have experienced moving prematurely. I believe I was supposed to come into what I came into. But that wasn't the time for me to do it. Because both times... It did not work out well. And I can tell you, I suffered a great loss both times. And I don't have anybody else to blame. I can't be upset with anybody. I take full responsibility that I did not go back to God and say, is this my time yet? So... In the definition where it says, let me read it again. Distinguishing between spirits. This gift is a special spirit given ability to properly discern evil spirits and distinguish whether or not an utterance is from the Holy Spirit. Toward the end of the age when false teachers, the spirit of error and deceiving spirits will greatly increase. This gift will be extremely important for the church. So we must know where it, or utterance is coming from. Whether it is, as we read over in 1 Corinthians 14, 29, whether it's in prophecy. Where is this utterance coming from? If someone is, is given some instructions or directions to an individual or co corporately, where is this coming from? Not only should we know where it's coming from, we need to know about the timing. Well, that's where prophecy comes in. Also, spirit of discernment. Because when we get to prophecy, we understand that there is um, past knowledge. There is current knowledge. And there is foreknowledge. So is the word that you're receiving, is it for the future or is it for the present time? All of that we have to take to the Lord in prayer. Let's look at our example as it was instructed for me to look at, which is Saul. 1 Samuel. see there's so much for him his appointment let's look at chapter 13 Saul reigned one year and when he had reigned two years over Israel Saul chose him 3,000 men of Israel whereof 2,000 were with Saul in Michmash and in Mount Bethel, and 1,000 were with Jonathan in Gib Gibbath of Benjamin, and the rest of the people he sent every man to his tent. And Jonathan smote the garrison of the Philistines that was in Gibeah, and the Philistines heard of it, and Saul blew the trumpet through all the land, saying, Let the Hebrews hear. And all Israel heard say that Saul had smitten the garrison of the Philistines and that Israel also was, was had in the abomination with the Philistines. And the people were called together after Saul to Gilgal. And the Philistines gathered themselves together to fight with Israel, 30,000 chariots and, and 6,000 horsemen and people as a sand which is on the seashore in multitude. And they came up and pitched in Mitchmaths eastward from Beth Aven. 
when the men of Israel saw that they were in a strait, for the people were distressed, then the people did hide themselves in caves and in thickets and in rocks and in high places and in pits. And some of the Hebrews went over Jordan to the land of Gad and Galad. As for Saul, he was yet in Gilgal, and all the people followed him trembling. And he tarried seven days according to the set time that Samuel had appointed, but Samuel came not to Gilgal, and the people were scattered from him. And Saul said, Bring hither a burnt offering to me, and peace offerings, and he offered the burnt offering. And it came to pass that as soon as he had made an end of offering the burnt offering, behold, Samuel came, and Saul went out to meet him, that he might salute him. And Samuel said, What hast thou done? And Saul said, Because I saw that the people were scattered from me, and that thou camest not within the days appointed, and that the Philistines gathered themselves together at Michmash, Micaiah, sorry, Therefore, said I, the Philistines will come down now upon me to Gilgal, and I have not made supplication unto the Lord. I forced myself, therefore, and offered a burnt offering. And Samuel said to Saul, Thou hast done foolishly. Thou hast not kept the commandment of the Lord thy God, which he commanded thee. For now would the Lord have established thy kingdom upon Israel forever. But now thy kingdom shall not continue. The Lord hath sought him a man after his own heart, and the Lord hath commanded him to be captain over his people, because thou hast not kept that which the Lord commanded thee. Well, what were Saul's instructions? What did Samuel say to him? Samuel instructed him to tarry until he came and that is over in the 10th chapter of first samuel verse 8 says and thou shalt go down before me to gilgal and behold i will come down unto thee to offer burnt offerings and to sacrifice sacrifices of peace offerings seven days shall thou tarry till i come to thee and show thee what thou shalt do. So seven days was the appointed time. And he also said, tarry till I come to thee. Tarry means to wait. Saul admitted, he, he said he, he was scared. The people were scared. He was scared of the enemy. And he said he forced himself to make a sacrifice. Here is where we should have a spirit of discernment. What's urging you to move so rapidly? What did God say? What did God say to you and I? If you just tune in, you tuned into the balance of life. I am Pastor Angel Ferguson, and I thank you so very much for joining us today. All right. Doing a little sharing on our social media page. As I mentioned early this morning the Holy Spirit woke me up I was up and these things these questions these thoughts and I sent myself an email from my phone of course because I did not get up to write out anything so I sent myself a email with these things that we're going to cover this week the first one is dealing with the spirit of discernment what came to me was be careful of that spirit that will come and try to to provoke you to move prematurely which will become a premature birth and then it's not time yet and also an example of king saul 
The next thing that was given unto me was you must have an anointing for the ministry. God gave you before you can have one for someone else's. We're going to look at Jeremiah. And then who is the vision for? Yes, God gave you the vision, but who is supposed to receive the benefits of that vision? So that's what we're going to cover on this week. And so today I want to deal with the spirit of discernment. Who, where, where are we getting our word from? Who, who is, where is the utterance coming from? What are we hearing? Who's drawing us? Who's leading and guiding us? Hearing the wrong voice, moving at the wrong time, because the flesh is anxious and frustrated and impatient can and will result in a premature birth. All I'm saying is we're moving out of God's time. We're moving in directions that God did not intend for us to move into, which is a snare and a trap for the enemy. By Saul being anxious in his flesh, and not trusting God, not moving in obedience to what the servant said to him. Where he would have been established, when where it says your kingdom forever, that means that his heirs, his sons, after he, after he died, his sons would sit on the throne after him. But that was cut off. Now with David, his kingdom was established forever. Because after David was who? Solomon. After Solomon was one of his sons and so forth. All to the lineage of Jesus Christ. So ask yourself this today. Why am I moving the way that I'm moving? Why am I doing what it is I am doing? Is this the will of God for my life? What did I hear? Am I in the right timing of God? Am I in alignment with his will? Whose instructions am I following? I totally agree with God utilizing the vessel because that is how God's will is done on earth through you and I. But when we get the instructions, when we get the call to move, when we are urged to, to, to get in a hurry, to get on these assignments, is it God telling us that it's time for us to move? I don't want you to move because I want you to move because I see that you're sitting idle or because I see that there is potential in you. Yes, I can see it, but you have to see it and you have to move in God's timing. It is not about me. It's not about our flesh. It is all about God's timing. It is all about knowing the timing of God. What is God's timing for my life? Whose voice do I hear? When I get instructions, where did those instructions come from? When I hear a word, where did that word come from? Does that word that I hear line me up with the written word of God? It's a huge question. And I want you to pray about it. Be sincere in your prayer. Understand where, where those thoughts come from to provoke you to move. That's our time for today. We'll be back tomorrow if it's his will. I love you.